Welcome to the CEN Show, the voice of the world community. We have two podcasts that's, that's open to the public and is easy to access. Let me show you the website. You access it from the website. So when you go to communityeducationnetwork.com, this is the home page. And on Monday, we had Conscious Corner with Professor Amin Ra and historian Joe Hembrick. We paid tribute to Dr. Avery Muhammad. And, and it says, join Zoom meeting here. That's how you could have got in for Monday. But now we're right here. And I'm not going to mention the name that you see. I'm going to mention it in a little while. And you just joined the Zoom meeting here, and you will be right in. But you got to have Zoom. You have to have the Zoom app. All right. I am your host, Rasuki Mascani, and I would like to introduce the panel this evening. We have uh, Professor Amin Ra. We have a, a guest, Sandra Atia. We got historian Joe Hembrick. We got Brother Machinda, and we got Miss Kathy Williams. Welcome, everybody. Tonight's topic is Revolution in Progress, two volumes of poetry. And I would like to show the books. Let me show the books so you can see. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make myself large here. Then I'm gonna take off my background so we can see these books real well. Bear with me. So we have volume one is right here, Revolution in Progress, volume one. And then we have volume two right here, Revolution in Progress. I encourage everybody to purchase those books. Okay, so now let me go back to my virtual background, because I like it. It's a nice picture of Africa. There we go. Technology is wonderful. So tonight's guest is the author of the books, poet Ronnie Forrest. Ronnie was a guest on Conscious Corner and the show was excellent. He's definitely a talented individual. And I would like to show you that video just in case you wanna see it. Matter of fact, I encourage you to go back and look at it. Give me a second here. I wanna make sure you are able to see this video here. And there it is. It was May 23rd, 2022. And it was an excellent show. You see it got 101 views. That's a lot for us. So I encourage everybody to go back and check that out. And you will see what I'm talking about when it comes to having talent. Okay, good evening, Brother Ronnie. Please tell us some things about yourself. And after that, I will ask some questions about the books. Hello, everybody. How are you all? Doing great. That's a beautiful thing. You wake up healthy, it's a great day. Everything else I can do for myself, you know. Uh, I don't have too much to say about myself other than uh, I try to live with respect, honor. Uh, I try to treat people like I like to be treated. Uh, <clears throat> you know, give respect and demand it, and you know, most of all, treat your fellow man right. Yes. You know, uh, which is not always the case, but you know, you do the best you can with what you have to work with. Uh, 
I said a little earlier, you know, uh, in the other video that I was actually uh, raised in bookie joints. So all walks of life came through that bookie joint. And so my mother used to tell me, even if a wino was laying on the ground and, and go, you see what that wino won't. He might be telling you something to save your life. You're not too good to see what somebody want when they ask you to come here for a minute. You don't have to do what they say, but you pay attention to what they say. And, you know, uh, that's just the way I was raised, you know. And <clears throat> at, 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 at 65 years old, I've kind of seen quite a few things, you know, coming from the streets, from stealing a piece of bubble gum to committing murder. You know, I worked in the hospitals uh, at Martin Luther King and St. Francis Medical Center in the trauma units, the ICC, the ICU units, the CCU units, you know, uh, burn units. <clears throat> And I've seen an awful lot, you know, uh, of death and destruction, you know, but on the other side of that, there's beauty to it too. You know, I've had a chance to go all around the world and see how other people live coming straight out of Compton. You know, uh, I love my life. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I mean, you know, uh, I don't have the things that I want, but I damn sure have the things that I need. And I'm grateful for that. You know, so with no further ado, I'll let you guys come on and go, and we're going and go through. All right, thanks <laughs> for that. Okay, so I'm going to start off, and then I, I have I have a lot to ask you, but I'm gonna uh, just start off with a few, and then we'll go to the panel. So I'm looking at page nine in the first volume, page nine, and. Um, the third paragraph, it says, they say those things that make you drink, drunk or high cigarettes and other devilish plantation supplies, you should despise. So can you talk about that and what you meant? Well, coming out of my mind and with what I said, me working in the hospitals and uh, seeing all the death and the destruction that have been bestowed upon we people, you know, uh, uh, we being self, self-destructive and all those things about nature. And if I see somebody smoking a cigarette, me, myself, coming from my eyesight, I know for me, that person doesn't care. You know, regardless of what they say, I'm looking at their actions. You don't care when you smoke cigarettes and other things like drinking alcohol and you know, just things that go, you know, people, everything in moderation, you know, I, I suppose. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't eat meat. All I want to do is have a long, uh, long, uh, longevity of my life, you know. But I've seen all these things that have drove me to live this way, you know. Uh, there's no way that America or uh, <clears throat> that they're going to, going to produce something, you know, that, that they want the Blacks to live long and be prosperous, you know. I just don't see that with all this, the slavery and the other things that have uh, been bestowed upon we people. So when I wrote that, that was just something that I seen, you know, from uh, the, the slave plantations, you know, the tobacco plantation, the alcohol, and all the devilish supplies that will kill you, you know? And now things have progressed to the point where everything is modernized. Now they get, they have a pill with all those side effects to do the same thing that this stuff has been doing, you know, instead of using your natural herbs and the things of that nature. So that's kind of where I'm at. Did I not answer your question? You can go back and we go back through it again. <laughs> No, that was good. That was good. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, the book is right in front of you? Yes. I think it'd be best if you read it and then talk about it. So I'm, I'm go to the third paragraph on page 10. It starts with no matter how you look at it and read that paragraph and then tell us about it. Third paragraph, page 10. Okay, no matter how you look at it, it's two sides to every story. We's caught in the middle, 
every race has put a black, a black eye on our face. We as black people must take and make our own Independence Day and stop celebrating everyone else's. Learn your own real ancient history. Uh, all I can say about that is, you know, we know everybody else's history. You know, we don't know our history and the history that we do though is not real ancient African black history that we, at least we're not taught that in school. You know, we're taught uh, all about the, the German Holocaust. We're taught all about uh, uh, Europe, you know, and everything but the real ancient African history. And when it is taught, well, the minute you see it, it's whitewashed. You know, uh, they have a, 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 a mulatto or octagon room up there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, we need to celebrate our own Independence Day, make our own independence. You know, uh, well, go ahead, keep going if you got more. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, because these are just really like poems and uh, uh, just things to pitchfork the sleeping giants to try to at least get them. Whoa, let me go study it. What is this? Something to get you get your motor revved up, you know. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm gonna make you go grab a history book, <laughs> you know, everything on earth has history. I don't care what it is. If it's a piece of straw on the ground, it's history where it came from. If it's, it, it, if it's a piece of dust in the atmosphere, it's a history where it came from. Everything on earth has history. Can you name me one thing on earth that doesn't have history? I can't. A black man, his history is whitewashed. He needs to reclaim it. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay, one more, and then I'm gonna start going to the panel a little bit so they can, they may have some burning questions for you. Now, page 11. At the bottom of the page, that James Baldwin quote, can you read that and then tell us why you chose that or, or what does it mean to you? Oh, is that, is, is, uh, I imagine one of the reasons people cling to their hate so stubbornly is because they sense once hate is gone, they will be forced to deal with pain. Well, now I tell you, I wrote all the poetry to this book and Brother Omari actually got the quotes and stuck the quotes to the book. Uh, I'm not real, only thing I know pretty much what, what James Baldwin has said was about the, uh, 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 if, if people were conscious, uh, they, would, they would be uh, angry and mad all the time, you know. Uh, but he has a whole library full of uh, uh, quotes and, and things. So he added these quotes to the book. But uh, let's see, I imagine one of the reasons people cling to their hates so stubbornly is because they sense once the hate is gone, they will be forced to deal with pain. I think that is kind of myself personally uh, geared or aimed at the Caucasian thoughts of thinking, you know, uh, that they hang on to their hates, the hate of, 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 of black people, you know. And once they find out the truth of something, they've been so much pain, they don't want to go through that. They just hold on to, to what they've been taught and what they got going for themselves. Okay. So I'm going to go to the panel before I go. I got, I got about at least 20 questions for you. So <laughs> okay. I don't know if we're going to get through them all, but I have a lot. All right. I'm going to start off with uh, uh, Sister Kathy. Kathy Williams, do you have a question or comment for Brother Ronnie? Um, no, all the information is pretty good. He's a great storyteller and also like poking a bear and do make you think. But no, just sounds like a great book. I'm gonna have to invest. All right, thank you. 
Okay, Ms. Sister Linda. No, and actually I came on too late because I wish I would have come on at the very beginning because I want to hear more what he had to say. So let him please keep going and I want to hear one of those poems. And can, um, Brother Rodney, can you please first announce your name of your book again first? Because it's very interesting and I'm loving it. It is Revolution in Progress, Volume 1 and Volume 2 of uh, Raw, Uncut, Conscious Black Poetry. Okay. And quotes. Uh, well, this actually says a collection of raw, uncut, conscious poetry and quotes. And are you going to be able to read any one of your poems this evening? Honey, I will recite you a poem. I have been going to book signings. I, I just did a Black Lives Matter uh, book signing and a poetry reading uh, uh, Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Yeah. How did that go? Yeah, you was telling me about it. How did it go? Well, you know, it was full of clergy, clergymen, and <laughs> and the uh, a, a lot of church people. So, you know, uh, quite a few people were real quiet. I don't know what they were thinking, but I I asked them in front, did they want since this is Black Lives Matter, did they want me to cut it and and tone it down, or do they want the raw? And they said mm -hmm. they wanted the raw, so. Mm -hmm. I didn't give him the raw, Professor. I thought about you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. I bet not cut this all the way loose like that. But so I toned it down anyway. But uh, I enjoyed it myself. You know what I mean? So I don't, they didn't give me a lot of feedback, or anything. You know, nobody really can't. I, the first time I, I did it, there I did just one point and I sold all the books out. This time I I gave them like about five different points. Boom, 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 boom. And it gave the whole story and it was like, ooh, you, what is this? You know what I'm saying? So. Okay, well, br Brother Ronnie, since yeah. you said it's uncut, can may I ask you one of your poems, are any of them geared toward women or children? Oh. To know the truth? I have one called Little Black Boy, but I don't, I, I, uh, uh, that's in the back of the book. Uh, I didn't really just uh, aim something at women and children. Most of my poetry is actually things that is, uh, uh, that I have read in books and, and throughout history. Okay. Uh, but let's see, a lot of the poems that, that's in this book, I didn't memorize. I couldn't memorize everything. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, yes, I understand. Now, okay, well, where can we get the book? Well, I, I, this, this book was published in Ghana. I brought it okay. back from Ghana. I haven't did anything but book signings and distributed them to myself. There's one restaurant, which is called Planet Health in the city of Compton. Uh, they have the book there on sale. Uh, I actually, I don't, I, 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 I published 200 books, brought them back, hard copies, and I think I got about 40 books left. I have to get some more books. But here in America, these books are hardback. I, they don't make the hardback book like this, uh, at, at least the, the couple of companies that I check with. Because mm -hmm. this is a Black book, so I, I, I only want the Black companies to distribute this book and have it. You understand? I didn't, I didn't do anything with Amazon or anybody. Uh, as of yet, until I can do me some more research. I've been writing this book and working on this book for over three or four years, actually. Okay. So, uh, wanna, I, mean, you, you, I can send you the book myself, or you can go to that restaurant in the city of Compton, and it's there. I'm in Florida, so I can't, I don't, I'm sorry, I can't we, get this. We'll make you. arrangements to get it to you, uh, Sister Linda. Yeah. We'll, Thank we'll you. get it to you. Thank you. Or at least um, some of the pages of the poetry. That's what I want to see. I yeah, sent we, Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I did send a guy uh, one book that I think he was in Washington, D.C. He was in Washington somewhere or something. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll make sure she get it. I'll make Absolutely. sure she get it. Both volumes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next person. Uh, uh, Sandra Atia, did you have a question or comment or are you just listening? Um, 
I'm just listening. Hi, Ronnie. Hey, that's my sister. That's <laughs> my sister. By all means. Hello, Sandra. I wish you well. I wish you well, too. All good right. to see you. <laughs> and it is good to be seen. Absolutely. Okay. And good to hear you, too. Okay. I talked, oh. I talked to Sister Spencer yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, our brother Hembrick. Yes, sir. Hey, Brother Ronnie, how you doing? Man, I've been laying to talk to you about some of these vegetables. We get ready to open up a, 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 a five-acre farm out in Palmdale. We've been doing all the soil and everything out there. Okay, okay. Yeah, mine is barren right now. Just got a few greens, a few spices. I've been battling a few ailments, that gout in my knee and my foot and kind of kept me from being out there, but it is ready to plant. I just got to rake it down, make my rows and get busy and see what grows good in the months that are coming. You know, I, I just started this project last year. So I'm not an expert on it. Well, that's a beautiful thing, I think, but it's just personal. I don't know. If you happen to change that diet to all plants, that gout might get up and run away from you. Well, there are some plants that cause it all, so it's all about Oh, you're okay. acid, not just meat. Like uh, spinach causes it, a KO causes it. Really? Asparagus, yeah. Uh, wow. Shellfish, red meat. But uh, you know, I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm 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 69, and I battle it. With <laughs> the with the and I got a cousin that's a nurse that brought to my attention that it was gout. So. Uh, they got this medication that I've been bucking taking. You know, I don't like medications at all, but yeah. I don't have to resort to it to keep it from coming on me like that. But anyway, appreciating what you were saying about the poetry uh, and about us knowing our history and all that. Rigo, if you, excuse me, Roscoe, if you could zoom that map in behind you so we can see after right quick. Okay. All right. Let's do for, it. For example, uh, audience. You Let's, see the size. Hold up, hold up, hold up one second. Let me get it big. And uh, the thing, okay, and then I'm going to take myself out. But when you start talking, it's going to go away from me. No, well, you can stay there. You can stay there. You don't have to leave. Only thing I want to point out about this is the size. And, you know, you talk about our history that's totally distorted. And you look at the size of Africa, and you look just above, that's Europe which is not really a continent at all. If you look at the size of it, they want to claim to be. That's yeah. more than, than, uh, than, than Western Asia. That's all Europe is. You, Raskani, you moved it off of there now. You You're talking, to... so let me see if I can get it up. Uh... It's okay. I, that, that's the only point I want to make. But my point is, people don't know that the United States of America will fit inside Africa three times. That's that's how much the stuff is distorted. Uh, uh, you know, geographically, not even getting to the historical part of it. And uh, so, so brother Ronnie, uh, you know, kind of kind of kind of following up on some comments you made about us and not knowing and what we should be about. You know, I've been a proponent that, you know, we need to stop celebrating all European holidays, value system, the whole nine, in order for us to find ourselves. And from the funds that black people spend on those type of things, we can finance any kind of revolution we need to, as far as, you know, pulling ourselves up from where we are. You think about the money we spend Christmas, Easter, New Year's, Thanksgiving, all these other holidays, the the 4th of July and whatnot. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And 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 to piggyback off what you said earlier, if we didn't, if we didn't buy that fifth of whiskey every week and kind of <laughs> put that towards something, and you know, and and I don't want to knock the people that do it. You know, I got a few, you know, uh uh, you know, things myself. You know, I got it all in my head historically, but there's still some things I'm working on with my health and my body. But anyway, uh, in the last comment, I want to, last thing I want to comment on when you said that conscious people 
are mad or upset all the time. And I have to put myself somewhat in that category. And Brother Raw has to back me up off people. <laughs> He's the best at it, man. He's the especially, best at it. <laughs> especially when you get to those people that you mentioned that you was on the stage with the other day. Yes. But anyway, and the, re the reason being is that it's so simple to me if our people can see it, but we got to change that stuff that exists between our ears because we've been so jacked up thinking you know, like, for example, you know, this heart thing or your heart. I'm going to tell you people something. The heart don't do a damn thing but pump blood. You don't feel all that stuff. The stuff you feel is in your mind, which is between your ears. So we got to get off that European romanticism about, you know, different areas of the body and the mind and all of that to get back to where we need to be. For example, you mentioned Holocaust, this German thing. Africans don't know about the Holocaust that they've gone through other than enslavement. You know, you know, we've gone through a Holocaust in, a, a, in the Congo, you, you know, during the era of, of King Leopold. They massacred 10 to 15 million Congolese people cutting their hands and feet and women breasts off behind rubber and brothers fighting over them tennis shoes. They need to know the history of where that rubber comes from to get them tennis shoes and the tires on them cars. That brothers have been brutalized and genocide by, and, and all the brothers wearing the bling bling too. Where they think they get it from? And the people, the indigenous people on the motherland are not benefiting off of none of that. And everything right. in industrial, in the industrial Western world comes from Africa. Everything, right. without exception. Even if, even like, like for example, in the Congo, that coal band metal, if it wasn't for that, wouldn't be no cell phones. We wouldn't be on this computer. We wouldn't couldn't do a whole lot of stuff. You follow what I'm saying? So in that regard, I kind of stay upset that our people can't see it, sometimes don't want to see it. You know, we don't want to get out of our comfort zone because we think that this old boy is a Superman. And I like what Gil Scott said, ain't no such thing as a Superman, you know. Yes, sir. We recognize, you know, where this boy gets all his power from, which is the resources that we produce that come from our land that sits right behind Brother Ra uh, Rasha Key's head. That's where it all comes from. And I'm going to shut up and let somebody else speak. <laughs> right on, Brother Henry. <laughs> all right, uh, Brother Machinda. Good evening. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just uh, appreciate Brother Ronnie coming on tonight. You know, with his contribution, his work. Um, you know, I, I always think about, you know, how do we reach the masses? You know, I mean, with your with your historical references, your poetry. You know, of course, we have social media and and, and new inventions and modern day technology to do a lot of that. This is, you know, the purpose of the platform to uh, to bring on, you know, conscious brothers like yourself to impart knowledge, you know, not just for the, for us and for, you know, the audience that may come along, you know, at some point on YouTube and so forth or join the Zoom presentations when we have them weekly. Um, I found, you know, but I continue to know that it, it, it's not, you know, it's not a negative comment, but it, I continue to, 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 uh quabble you know to 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 deal with you know how to reach uh the you know the masses i'm looking at the generations that's coming you know way after me of uh, the modern day uh, i mean i work in education currently been in it for many many years um and i'm still on the front line you know trying to pass on you know type of information that you're talking about you know you know, things that I learned tonight, I'll take back and, you know, you know, and, and stop some young brothers and sisters and, 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 and kind of enlighten them with things that I've learned and, you know, that type of thing. I had the privilege to go to Montgomery, Alabama over the last weekend, Friday overnight. I stayed overnight, me and my wife. And, you know, uh, uh, again, uh, the Equal Justice Initiative Legacy uh, Museum and Memorial, you know, I mean, we've been hearing about slavery and incarceration ourselves for years. You know, I, I like to think that I'm somewhat a conscious brother, but oh man, I challenge anybody to 
they, they having to go there at some point, you know, and, 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 and it's just, you know, from it, it's the theme is from enslavement to incarceration, of course, like Brother Hembry talks about, you know, hey, it goes way back, you know, um, you know, with the destruction on the continent of Africa and it, it leads up to, uh, you know, setting up the slave trade and, and different things like that. But, uh, you know, it, it was, like I say, I, you know, I've been exposed to a lot of things as it relates to, you know, a lot of history and a lot of, you know, as, you know, whether it's uh, abroad or, you know, inside the country, of, you know, the United States. And, and I tell you, my wife and I left there like, like, wow, you know, it's like very deep. So what I, what I witnessed is, um, and, and tied into my point it, with your works and your poetry and, and, and your historical references and things like that, you know, is like, you know, how, you know, how do, you know, how do we um, appeal to these young people, you know, because the school systems aren't really delivering this information as you talked about, you know, um, we have to expand on it. You know, we have to expand on it. It was just as many white people at this museum and memorial than, than, than us, you know, and, uh, you know, it's like a lot of, you know, they're trying to, you know, make themselves conscious out, you know, I guess, or some of them may feel guilty and want to, you know, you know, change their ways or whatever reason why they're there. But it's like when you have a, a, a facility and a memorial, you know, museum and a memorial that's set up for, for us to, you know, be educated on, you know, it, you know, so we won't get back to that point, you know, it covers Jim Crow and different other things. The technology that's incorporated into the museum and the memorial is phenomenal. You know, um, they had at the memorial, they had, um, you know, uh, these, these kind of like rectangle, um, sus it, it, rectangle blocks that were suspended in the air that represented, you know, um, well, it had on, names on the, uh, on the blocks, people that were hung back in the day, you know, going back to in the 30s and the 40s and 50s and, you know, Jim Crow before Jim Crow, things like that, you know, different uh, Southern states that were uh, uh, participants, willing participants in the destruction of Black people. And uh, so I just, you know, I can go on and on, but I just want to commend you just for your contribution and, and, and what you're doing and your energy and tenacity uh, to impart knowledge and, uh, you know, to, to uh, offer that inspiration for myself to continue to uh, move forward and, 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 and like I say, and anything that I can do to try to get this information out there, you know, you know, and I'm, I'm interested in reading your poetry and your, your book and, and, and your books and things like that. And uh, again, I wanna thank you for coming tonight and I'm done. Okay, uh, Brother Mashinda, can you mention that venue again for us one more time? Well, it was in Montgomery, Alabama. It was the legacy, it was, um, it, it's, um, it's the Equal, Equal Justice Initiative. That's, um, that's uh, I, I believe the organization that, uh, that sponsors or, you know, you know, funded the construction of this museum. Uh, but it's basically, uh, it's called the Legacy Museum. And then of course, uh, there's a memorial that's about maybe uh, not even a mile away from the actual museum. And basically the memorial is, it, it, we, we went at night. They have a daytime uh, tour, so to speak. And then there's the evening. And in the evening, it's more like if you're going through um, like a cemetery or something because it's, it's solemn and, and, and you're paying homage to these brothers and sisters that are, were, that were hung and, um, and, and, and it's, it's, it's just incredible. You know, it, I, and, and you know, you, you know me, I talk about the energy of things and uh, the energy that I got out of it, it was just powerful. And it talks about, like to say, it's the theme from enslavement to incarceration. And, um, you know, of course, the slave trade, it has all the pictures and things like that. But they have, you know, they use like holograms, you know, where you can go before like this window. And there's a sister that's there saying, and she was describing. Went mute. Brother Machenda. Oh, there. And it's like a hologram, but it's like real people talking to you, but it's a hologram, you know, kind of ghostly looking and so to speak. But, you know, and there's little kids looking for their parents that are lost, you know, and they're enslavement, you know. And then, of course, they're, 
you know how you go to the jail and you pick up the phone to talk to somebody. You know, there's some brothers sitting there and sisters that's sitting there waiting for you to sit down. You pick up the phone. They pick up the phone. And of course, it's a recording and everything, but it's as if and they're they're just telling their story uh, about incarceration and, you know, you know, what's what has transpired and the, the evilness of the system and things like that. And they said, thank you for listening to my story. And I believe these are real inmates. These are real people that were. But they, like I say, it was pre-recorded in high resolution graphics and video and things like that. It's just, it was just a phenomenal visit. But a legacy museum and um, memorial, and that's in Montgomery, Alabama. And, uh, you know, so that's just one area, one part that, like I say, I just wanted to throw that in there because I want, I'm tying it into Brother Ronnie. You know, you know, he's offering his contribution and his, you know, his know-how, his understanding, which we, you know, he's just another soldier you know foot soldier you know you know in 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 route to trying to you know res, you know trying to enlighten you know the masses of our people you know so i want to thank you for that thank you brother thank you you know i think i made a bad mistake i'm actually house sitting for my my very good dear friend and brother and uh i grabbed my computer i charged it up all night and made sure it was full and I grabbed it and threw it in the car and didn't grab the charger. And my, I'm sitting here, I'm looking, my man, my time is just shrinking and shrinking. I'm at 43%. And I mean, it's rolling fast and I don't have my charger. Oh. <laughs> we, we get through it. All right. Okay. I just wanted to show that, that picture of Africa right here. And I think Henrik was saying up here is, is Europe. That's, you know, it's really small. <laughs> and, and how and how this is deception, you know, and, and uh, I know Brother Asul Jabal, when he came to lecture when we was in college, he brought an actual size map to show how big Afri Africa was compared to the rest of the world. So, yeah, deception runs deep. Yeah, really deep. Okay, uh, sister, make it happen. Unmute, please. Are you there, Sister Make It Happen? Yes, I'm here. I had a little technical difficulty, kind of hit a button and lost y'all for a second. But anyway, <laughs> I found you. You know how technology is. Got to just be a little patient. But greetings to the family. Greetings, everyone. Giving honor to everyone's time for today. Um, I didn't quite hear the beginning of the uh, Brother uh, Forrest presentation, but it sounds like he's an author and a published author and a poet. A poet. Uh, what I did hear is he was working, I guess, on his latest uh, publication. It took him about three years to finish. So I'm inspired by that. You know, I think writing is important for us to be able to um, communicate and empty our heads and our hearts so that uh, we can clear space for growth and uh, newness. So I'm always impressed when someone is able to get their thoughts out of their head and put it um, in a, 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 on paper so that it could be shared, become a lesson for others to learn from. So I thank you for that. And I look forward to learning more about your work. I myself as an educator, just like the rest of us here on this call. And we have uh, young people in our midst that we uh, are responsible for shedding light to. Um, again, being on this call, knowing that most of us are in the struggle and uh, revolutionary looking for changes for our people, either uh, historically, personally, or just because of DNA. So I'm honored to know of you. I'd like to know more about your work since I missed the beginning of the uh, presentation. Um, and uh, thank you again, and look forward to hearing more about your work. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I would love to. Anytime, I would love to come and do poetry and have a book signing anywhere, as long as I can afford to get there, you know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks, sister. Make it happen. All right. So, uh, Professor Ra? Yeah, Sante, sign up to everyone. Bonnie Ghani, appreciate what's been said, if I understand correctly. And I want to thank Brother Rashi Key for extending another invitation to Brother. Uh, uh, Ronnie Forrester uh, to come on and share his wealth of knowledge. But personally, I want to say before I even make my comments is how personally uh, I, I, I really 
appreciate brother, uh, brother. I call him Duran, but we, uh, he, he is one of my best, best friends and one of the rocks that uh, I lean on him and brother Marvin, the house he's sitting for, uh, <laughs> are, 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 are great, great brothers. I mean, true brothers. I ain't talking about people who say they brothers. I mean, they are down to earth brothers to me. And they've been that way with me. And we've worked together on numerous projects. And uh, I just can't be thankful enough for his friendship, his partnership personally. And if you ever got to know him uh, and get to get around him, he will treat you. Uh, if you're a woman like a goddess, he'll treat you a brother like a king. Uh, I mean, he, he's that deep. First of all, I want to say he's very modest about his uh, contribution. I want to thank him for writing this book. Uh, uh, and I love the title, Revolution in Progress. Because in many ways, he's a revolutionary. So it goes hand in hand with his book. A revolutionary, turn, 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 your, turn yourself around. You know, we weren't supposed to be uh, strong black men, conscious black men. And, uh, you know, uh, Brother Forrester proved that. He's a multi-genius and in the same light, like you're not, not on the level of uh, Imhotep who built the pyramids and was a dentist and was a doctor and was, was the first doctor and uh, was an architect and was and also a, a, a storyteller and literature person. But he's a multi-genius in the, in the auspices of oppression that we go through as black people by making a way out of no way. First of all, he's a great entrepreneur. Duran has started many businesses and was successful in them, in various ones. And I'll get to them in a minute. But second, he was, like he said about horticulture, he's self-taught, he, you know, he, taught, he ain't went to no uh, agriculture school to learn it. He just went and started studying. And, and then, and, and then open up many gardens all over the place, wherever he's at, straight up. There he had a business out of an aquarium business. You know what I mean? He became a master of fish, the different fish. Then he knew the difference between a saltwater fish and a water fish and a lake fish. I, I said, man, the only thing I know about fish is throw some cornmeal on them and fry them. His <laughs> brother said, hey, look, no. He gave them life. He treated them like human beings. I mean, I mean, it was just a beautiful thing to see it. We used to build aquariums, built them, and, and showed you how to keep them clean and how to keep them fresh. You know, that, that, that takes a lot of work, you know? And then at the same time, he was deep into health, a master of health and nutrition, vegetarian. I mean, straight up in the, taking care of his body, not telling people what to do, but being an example of how you could be. That's beautiful. Then he graduated from streetology, straight out the street, a PhD in the streets. In the game from three card Molly to find the P, to a shooting dice, to <laughs> playing tonk, to playing poker. This brother know all those street games, but at the same time, the street brothers love him and adore him. All the brothers on the street that he used to hang out with had nothing but praises for Duran because of his attitude toward them and his treatment. Getting to his multi geniusy He's also a restorer of a vintage car. I mean, they take a old Volkswagen and turn it into a, a modern day car. Restore it totally. Thunderbirds, truck, and put them in car show. And that right now he's going to school to learn how to do more with cars. A master genius, I'm telling you. We got brothers on the street just standing on the corner. We got other people that won't even lift a book, let's not write a book. What they say, if you want to hide something from black people, put it in the book. You understand? So what? This brother write a book. 
But he ain't gonna, and he wrote about his personal experience in the IEC, the black world. He also was a um, brother, like I said, down to earth. And at the same time, an author, an author, took time to write his book. He was deep into this book. He kept writing and writing, rewriting and rewriting. Didn't publish himself. Got his friend Omari Bakari there, edited, and he put it out there himself. Like Sister Linda be telling me I need to do. <laughs> you know, but I, I, I'm going to get to that. But above all, he's a great father to his children. He, he be on them. He be on his kids. Wherever they're at, he's at. He may pop up on me. Only they don't know where he's coming from. He may pop up out the floor on me. You understand? Making sure they do the right thing. That's the beauty of him. I've seen it happen. I've seen him do these things. And this is why when he said history is important and he writes about it, he's saying it's not about knowing your history. It's about learning from it. Not the negative things that some people do, but the best of our history and incorporating it in your life. And that's what this poetry book is about. Incorporating the best of us as a people, our best efforts to change our lives, to revolutionize ourselves. The first revolution has to begin with you. And that's, that's what makes this book so, so great. And so when I look at him, I, I think of the term Aso, a great, great poet uh, of ancient times. Joe Hendrick know about Aso. You understand, storyteller. I think about Imamu Baraka, you know, a cultural nationalist out of New York. You understand, he helped put the Black agenda together for the Black United Front. I think about Hakeem Mahani Mufi, former Don Nick, great poet of the Black 60 movement. I think about Gil Scott when I read this book. I think about the last poet, selfish desires on a burning like fires among those who stole the gold as they continue to keep the people asleep and the truth from being told. <laughs> Racism and greed keep the people in need from getting what's rightfully theirs. Lying, stealing, and double dealing as they exploit the people who fear. Now, Dow Jones owns the people's homes and all the round and land, buying and stealing their humble dwellings in the name of the master plan. I can go on, but I'm going to get back to you. <laughs> you remind me of the Watch Poets. You remind me of the last poet. And you remind me of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And he's a griot. Do I got stories for you? And he comes up and he keeps his father in heart. He had a beautiful ceremony for his father in the community. And he had speakers and music and a celebration. Not no sad thing. People hooping and hollering, falling all over the place. No, it was an uplifting spiritual thing. So I have a number of praise for Brother Duran, Brother Ford. And uh, if you get to know him, you'll see he's for real. And he can't get rough. You know, he's not no English major. But, you know, he speaks Ebony and street phonics. But at the same time, he's true to who he is. So I always want to say, I, I sat there and, and, and just read the poem that you wrote for me that you put in the book when you get a chance. Duran, that's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Professor Thank Rod. That Thank was wonderful. You, hey, hey, also, I want to add to that list, Rod. You didn't tell about, he's a respiratory therapist. <laughs> yeah, all of that. <laughs> he worked. <laughs> tell him about that, Brother Ford. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, I got to be a respiratory practitioner because I had racehorses. And I have a, a very good friend who was a straight A student all the way through school. He's the surgeon at Santa Anita. He does surgery on racehorses. And that's the next book that I'm writing about our families, all four families of us. And 
uh, this boy would always tell me I would be his assistant. I would be his assistant. But, you know, uh, I didn't have the education to be a veterinarian, nothing. So I did the next best thing. I became a respiratory practitioner in order because I figured that their lungs wasn't much different from a human lungs because, you know, they might be a little bigger, but they all got eyes, nose, ears, teeth. You know, we all animals. So uh, I fell right in line with that. And, but I, I had a drug addiction at, at an early age, at the age of 13. And uh, <clears throat> that drug addiction, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I enjoyed it while I did it. And after, uh, after it, 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 it succumbed me and took over, you know, uh, I was tired of living the way that I was living and I knew I had to make a change, I was gonna die. So I made the change, you know. And it's the best thing I could ever did, you know. Uh, I never hide, you know, I was never in denial about anything like that. I mean, you know, uh, in the beginning, I probably was, but I had learned how to just start telling the truth about stuff, you know what I mean? So uh, I worked at one of the local hospitals and they told me that uh, the only reason why I lasted as long as I did because I was so honest about it, you know. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I, now my time is, is, is going away and, and, and I hate it. I got 32 minutes, I mean 32%, but we gonna keep going, you know, but uh, yeah, uh, my friend that's, that, that's a surgeon, you know, uh, I love him to death. And, you know, his father was a jockey. I have another friend, he rode, he rode the, uh, uh, the world's, his daddy rode the world's fastest horse, three time world champion. Never mentioned he was a black man. Then there's another little young fella. I'm the one that took him to Hollywood Park in Santa Anita and Los Alamitos. I was his agent and he wind up breaking one of the richest horses in the world. And he would have been the richest horse in the world, but he lost one race, you know? And so now his daughter's getting ready to be a world champion barrel racer. And he, you know, it's, it's you know, I, it's just, it is what it is, man. But I'm a professional horseman too, you know? Uh, I, I just, you know, love life, man. I love life. You know, I, I really love life. You know, I go play poker, you know, and, and I talk so much stuff, the whole casino be listening to wait to hear what I say next, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it don't be all good stuff either. <laughs> the adventures of Ronnie. <laughs> now, okay, can you tell us that, uh, that poem you did about for Ron? Uh, let me get to it. This is what I do. Uh, uh, here we go. Uh, you don't have the book with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, I had actually did a, 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 a little skit that I started. Uh, nowhere in the history of this whole planet has one species ever been taken for granted like the black species. They talk of World War I, they talk of World War II, but even the funky Jew has failed to mention and never ever plans to the black African Holocaust as it pertains to you and me. You see, it was the real first world war and it was upon the blacks. Now these are facts. The whole world is taking aim on Africa and executing blacks from around the world. And Hurricane Whitey, has no intentions of coming to an end. So with that, I'll begin. And here it is, my friends. The hate storm ripped through Black Africa. Black lives burned Black books, body cities, demolishing temples, causing devastations in the most hostile manners, hangings, lynchings, miseducation, while the Blacks were being hemmed in from all sides of the world. Whites were taking Black men, women, children they find, and enslaving them making themselves the Caucasoid kings of Christian humanity while throwing blacks the scraps of all Christianity, all religions that make black folks the Frankenstein virgins you see today, the sleeping giants. And after the fall of the black empire, the Christian churches sprang up one every other day. Do you hear what I say? Until this day, we blacks are still pray. <clears throat> Now, black folks are scared of revolution. Black folks are still scared of revolution. It's about change. Try your diet, if in poor health. Black folk 
rather die from a food-related illness rather than change their diet. The revolution is being televised right in front of our eyes. Do we realize it's despising about racism and white lies that we let fly? Man up, Black, this ain't tit for tat or even chit chat. Holiness, Baptist, Catholic are all Christianity and in the forefront of world domination, degradation, humiliation, and trickery. The Blacks have been booted. Our minds have been looted and polluted from centuries of whitewash interwoven into our souls. You can fall to your knees and beg and plead, but it all falls on deaf ears because that won't help you here. Even if you fall to your palms with Islam, the revolution is about change. Ask your ancestors and your fallen peers. All that's left here is tears. Tell me, Black, what is your fear? <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome, I, can, I can do a few more if you want me to, because I got that, that's what I did for them preachers, and I went, I did about four of them down the road, you know, and it got real quiet up in there. But all <laughs> I can say, thank you. Well, I love it. Yes, sir. Yeah, how much time you got on that computer? <laughs> I got twenty-seven percent, man, and it's because this is rolling. This, I mean, it's just go, 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 and I charge this thing up two days straight, never unplugged it. Oh, uh, okay. Well, man, you hey, can you give us another one? <laughs> yeah. Look, 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 look. It was all water and sun, and definitely wasn't no fun. As they slipped and slide and rocked from side to side on that old boat ride from Africa. Crack, clickety clack, them the sounds of whips and chains on their backs. You niggas, you praise Jesus. You praise God, or I'll smite your asses with my guns and my rods. And if you disobey, you will be too to pray. One of the old blacks cried out, Oh, Bruni, 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 oh, Bruni. The chains fell off like rain. One white lost his brain. The other stuck himself with the sword, and the rest of the whites were fighting to jump overboard. Now, this is the power that we Blacks slack when we don't have each other's back. Now that old boat was afloat with no shady. Wow, they landed their asses up in Haiti. They fought like natural men. They kicked their ass all over the sand, disrespecting the white man. And until this day, they say, the whole world has cut us off because we are Black. And all we did was fight back. <laughs> now, I cried, I cried. And you ask why? My all-seeing eye, it tells me the truth. I can see the white lie before it fly. I'm not asleep. This here run deep through my tissue and roll soul. My knowledge is black and vast as the universe is deep. The stars shine bright on set, Horace and Ra erased from sight. When blackness on earth becoming as one, Shit, black, it synchronizes the stars, the moon, and the sun. And when I'm looking over and not going through, I can feel the ancestors coaxing me to make it do what it do. Now, it's safe to say what's done to the dark will come to light. But man, I got to read like it's a fight to keep them from taking my conscious insight. And I refuse to let them steal my light. Oh, they push God bait, but I won't bite. This Milky Way ride is a sweet, wicked plight. Now, I'm from America, and in America, we were taught to say the Pledge of Allegiance of the flag of the United States, but there's also a Black America. And in Black America, the youth are sagging their pants as a sign of rebellion. But there's also a sagging flag, and it too is a sign of rebellion in black America. It is red, black, and green with blood flow. And that blood is for the assassinations and the deaths that have been bestowed upon we people. <coughs> Emmett Till, Mega Evers, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, <coughs> Fred Hampton, <coughs> Bunchy Carter, Sandra Bland, and the list as long as a train that can literally just drive you insane just to know the trickery that has been put into the reins of the system. <coughs> oh, 
Oh boy. Uh, Get you some water. So with no further ado, I present to you the sagging flag. The stars and stripes are all hype. What's it doing for me? I'm not really free. They blinded me so I couldn't see with whitewash forced upon me. I didn't ask to come here. I was bought, stolen, and sold, and used like a rundown shoe sole. Time and time again, I get crumbs. You get caviar, near jets, and yachts. And if I bitch, I'll get a ditch of three hots and a cot if I'm lucky. So take your flag or banner, if you will. It's just a sign that you were robbed, steal, or kill, or leave us with a sick disease or ill, and then turn around and feed us a pill with all those side effects while looking down off your heel. <clears throat> this is no love sensation. You better ask the natives. I say, you better ask the natives, where's my reparations? My just do. My 40 acres and a mule, and I'm supposed to participate in a vaccination? Shit, will it be a burial or cremation with undying love in our race and for each other? We'll rule when you get that shit from the old school. Now, they say Adam and Eve, well, they say Genesis is supposed to be the beginning. <coughs> uh, let me see, wait a minute. They say Genesis is supposed to be the creation of all, uh, uh, the creation of the beginning. They say Adam and Eve is supposed to be the creation of all mankind. But you see, that doesn't resonate with the original black man's plan because you cannot take two whites and make a black, but you can damn sure take two blacks and make a white. Now don't fuss or fight. This here is the shit that's been erased from sight. The great ancient Akebu line, land of the blacks, some tribes there, pygmies and nothic negroes who had exodus all over the globe before there was ever a white person in sight. They never had to fuss a fight, didn't even exercise wrong from right. It was in love, trust, harmony, and muscles and might. And even the wild animals would warn before they bite. The tribes of this great kingdom had only seen few whites. They numbered only in the teens of these white human beings. They were the albinos from their own black race. So rare there in that place, and still yet the great kings made them their pets and assigned them an overseer to keep them in check. Now the little white seeds began to breed. They made a plenty, damn near too minty. The pets were looking all the glimmer, the glamour at the black swing and the hammer, looking at pygmies, pyramids, diamonds, and gold iron and copper and things to be traded in mold. Astronomy, mathematics and chemistry too, when looking at those masters, not knowing what to do. They begin to chitter and chatter. The way of black life started not to matter. They begin to lie, still causing havoc at will. Now the blacks were loving, kind and goodwill and didn't even know how to steal. They had harmonious assembly lines and knew their pecking orders up in their minds, showing no signs to find any reasons to punish or bind this wicked white race of their own mankind. Finally, finally, the blacks made a stand and had to ban and demand that these whites leave their land. The whites wandered and roamed all over the lands, eating cats, rats, hyenas, and even men. Finding springs and fountains, landed their asses in the carcass mountains, dwelling in tunnels and caves, vowing to make black slaves one of these days, making tools from sticks and stones and carcass bones, mad and rage at this stage at having to leave the blacks and facing animal attacks, making a pact that they would retaliate for this fate. And until this date, their anger has led to hate with nothing in existence to ever measure it by. Evolution of hatred and you wonder why blacks, we's naive to believe that mankind started from Adam and Eve. Blacks, beware when you see the blonde hair and them blue eyes. Them's the monkeys that exterminate lives. Mm -hmm. right, that'll do it. We'll kill it. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep, man. You know, hey, Professor Ryan, you're on mute. You on mute, bro? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know who he, know who he sound like? Who's that? Mulana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, that's that's deep, man. You know what? I'm I'm not gonna ask you no more questions. People going to buy that book after you did that. You you should have many people coming to get that book. That was awesome, man. Very very awesome. I appreciate it. I really thank good. you, brother. I thank you. <clears throat> I so, mean, I had yeah. an uncle, man. My uncle was forced to leave home at eight years old because he talked back to white people. Uh, he came to California with his sister during the time that he was from eight years old to, I don't know how old, because this was, he was born in, in uh, 1916. And he was one of the first black horsemen at Santa Anita, at Hollywood Park when it opened up. And he owned his own horses, you know, and the white people did not like that shit from what he tell me, you know, but, uh, that's what he did, man. He studied. He come home every day and read at least an hour a day, uh, all the history books. You know, he read J. A. Rogers, uh, uh, just the host of John Henry Clarks and uh, Dr. Benz and whatever else he he got. Is the more he read, the more he liked to read. You know, and so when I had an opportunity to go stayed with him because I was in so much trouble. My mom would say, shit, you got your mom, well, go and go with your uncle and, and, and learn about horses and stuff. Cause this, you know, the shit you doing ain't gonna get it. So, uh, you know, I got a chance to, to, to go with him and he's telling me all these stories about Hannibal crossing the Alps and uh, uh, Cleopatra making perfume out of flowers and uh, 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 Queen has she put, uh, just, you know, I'd never heard anything like them, you know what I mean? And he talked to me every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Next thing I know, yeah, I was like hypnotized or something, man. It, it, uh, I had, you know, my mom and them started telling me, why you had more since you was a baby? You don't want to hear that shit. Man, man, shit. Go on back where you come from, you know? <laughs> so that's what happened with me. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. All right. That's awesome. Awesome. So, uh, man, we we're gonna uh, you you you're gonna play out in a minute because you're probably in the teens right now, right? Yeah, I'm at eighteen right now. Yeah. Okay. So, look, we, we, man, I appreciate you coming and sharing your poetry and your your story. Professor Ra got an awesome job, you know, telling telling us some of your history. So. Hey, we, we can't wait for you to come back, man. Yeah, well, I got another book. I got another book. They finished with my chapter, so we got three more families. And they're all telling their own story in this one book, you know, where they talk about the jockeys being ran into the rail, where the first, all the first black jockeys was at, uh, in, in, in Kentucky was all black, and, and they ran them off, and, and, and they put the doctrine of exclusion into order on, on them and wouldn't allow them to share any wealth or anything like the white people could, you know, uh, we tell them all that and tell them how Hannibal was able to sustain the, the war that he did because of his infantry and the horses that them black horsemen took care of them, them horses and them elephants, you know? Yeah. So we get a chance to tell all that. Yeah. Looking forward to that too. Definitely want to read about that. So I'm, a, um, before you go, I'm gonna see if anybody by raise of hand, do anybody have a last question or comment before Mr. Okay, go ahead, sister, make it happen. I am so grateful for hearing you. I missed the beginning, but this was very much a blessing, a treat. And um, yes, um, I wanna hear all the stories. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Um, I'm an inspiring writer myself, so I'm going to be you know, working with some kids on writing, but I want to share these stories with students and with young people because you have a lot of history that they need to know about. Um, I'm right there in Compton at one of the middle schools, and so I want to make sure that uh, our babes, you know, they're at the general school, and so we just need to make sure that the legacy continues that is a small number of us now, you know, um, our numbers are dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. And so it's really important that our students and our young people know about griots like yourself. And so I'm very uh, thankful to be on this call tonight. Wow. I didn't know you were in Compton. That's beautiful. Uh, I'm going to have, 
uh, Raw has been on me about editing this book, you know, just just to make it real clean for kids, because there's this few things there that you know it, that you know is is it's a few pages in there that got some words in it that maybe some parents might be upset about their kids hearing. You know, I don't know. Well, maybe parents should read with their kids so they can have discussion about real life. Yeah. How about that one? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I agree. I, I, I talk to my little boy like he's a grown man. He plays He plays four different musical instruments right now, and they want him to start uh, 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 playing the bass in, in, in the senior. Well, he's in the junior band. He's going to be playing the senior band, but he don't want to play music no more. I'm like, man, are you kidding? You got to have three or four ways to put beans on your table. You can't just have some whole rap to run to the same hole. You, man, you know, you need everything you can. Ain't nobody going to love you like you love you. How you going to be expecting somebody else to throw you some beans on the table when they can't put them on their own table? Man, you, man, you got to do better than what you're doing. So I'm constantly on him about that, you know, constantly on him. You know, it, you got three or four, you know, right now, I, we was lucky enough that Barbara Morrison had him come up and play the bass guitar. And he was with uh, a, a world-renowned pianist, uh, some other people. I don't know who they were because I don't have a music bone in my body, but I showed them and said, man. And he was sitting there and said, do you know who that is you playing with? Boy, you better keep that video. Are you kidding? This you playing with and you playing? Oh, man. And so he had a big smile on his face. So he been kind of <laughs> listening pretty good now, you know. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Brother Machenda. Brother Machenda had something to say. Brother Forrest, brother, brother Ronnie. Yes, uh, sir. The, yeah, you mentioned Santa Anita, those jockeys and the, the, uh, the people that what what are some of those names? Can you give those out? Uh well, the, the little jockey that I had, uh tip, his name is Dahashi Gladney. He's out of watch. Uh his daughter's getting ready to be a world champion, uh, uh a barrel racer. The, the veterinarian's name is uh, Dr. Noton Patio Jr. His daddy was a jockey at Santa Anita. Uh, I mean, at, at, at Los Alamitas and, and other places, but he rode all over the, uh, all over the United States. Also, uh, Robert Strauss. Robert Strauss was the one who rode the uh, world's fastest horse, three-time world champion. Now, his whole family was horsemen. His third and 15th, 16th generation horsemen, you know, uh, that his sisters was a jockey, his brothers were jockeys and trainers, you know, and I had an opportunity to study up under them and, and things, you know, just th through them knowing my, my uncle was older than all of them, you know, <clears throat> but and so they all right. respected I, my uncle, you know. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a horse enthusiast myself, you know, I'm not, not as deep as you, but, you know, my daddy used to play the horses back in the we were little kids, and 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 I learned to appreciate the sport, the sport of kings, and and as they call it. But uh, just hearing your, your take on it, you know, I can appreciate that. You know, uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not a big gambling sort per se, but you know the 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 the, the whole respect for the, the the you know the whole uh the horses, the races, the the you know, and then like you say, your historical perspective about it, you know, that's very uh, special to me, and I appreciate you sharing. Uh, that information as well, um, you know, and, uh, you know, again, I thought, you know, your poetry was off the charts, you know, and like Brother Ross said that, you know, last poets, the watch poets, you know, uh, Brother Ronnie poet, you know, you, 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 um, you did that, brother, you have a good evening. All right, thank you, brother, thank you. I, I only did it because it was in my head and like, like I heard the lady say, it had to come out and I just took my time and I, and I would always talk to Raw, always, always talk to Raw about it. And to my surprise, it, it really happened, you know, but I love Raw to death, man. You know, I do, Professor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we want heartbeat, brother. Yes, sir. That's, 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 yeah. that's beautiful. Which, which Marv is that? Marvin Maven, he, he's, he's out. He's celebrating his anniversary. Yeah. His 10th, 11th year anniversary. He's in, in the island somewhere. Yeah, he, he's in Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody else before we sign out tonight? Well, I wish you all the best. All right. Appreciate uh, everything. 
Yeah, man. Thanks a lot. So we're going to, I'm going to talk about who's coming on next week. We got, we got um, two guests. We have Spring and Damian McCalman. Damian been on before with us. Now he, he, uh, he has his mom coming on with him. And the topic is images of professionalism. So that should be real good. That's a, that's a topic we haven't talked about much. So that should be real good. Looking forward to that. And brother Ronnie. Well, he had to excellent. go out. He had to leave out. He had to leave he'll out. Right. Yeah, he'll be right back. Okay. All and, right, and, folks. Uh, Professor uh, Ronnie. Monday, Monday, we're going to uh, either have um, someone, um, I can't think of her name now, dealing with the homeless, or we're going to have a community forum and discuss uh, Woman King uh, with Viola Davis the positives and negative images that may have come out of that production. Uh, so I see, I see you, <laughs> Javad. <laughs> and so uh, we may have that discussion uh, also Monday. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, brother Ronnie, thanks again. Man, I and, appreciate uh, it, man. I, 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 I. Anytime anybody wants me to come do some poetry and book signing, I'm there. Okay, we we gonna we gonna we gonna hold you to that. <laughs> All right. All okay. Right. So uh conscious corner, each one teach one. Everybody have a good evening. All right.